Hello everyone, welcome to chapter five. And this is 5.1 to do with angles. So we're entering into the trigonometric zone. Uh, angles here, we begin with angles as rotations and radian measures. So you can think of angles, if you were to define angles, you can think of uh, two rays, right? There's one ray here. And there's another ray that you can draw. And what you see here is the ray that we started first, right? It's called the initial side. And typically, your initial side is always the x-axis. So it's a horizontal line, x -axis, positive x-axis. And uh, when you form a ray, when you draw a ray, the ray is, um, is a line with, uh, it's a line segment, with uh, one end that, is, that terminates and the other end that continues on. That's why you have the arrowhead here, but no arrowhead on the other side. So then you have two rays and the angle is formed between the two rays. So the initial side is the first ray. And when you are trying to span that angle, you, your other ray where your angle ends is called the terminal side, right? Terminal means where it terminates, terminal side. And uh, these two rays will have a common point, end point. And this end point is called the vertex. So it's an end point, so that point is a vertex. And so uh, we always talk about the initial side and the terminal side when it comes to um, angles. And the arrow, as you can see here, for the uh, angle that's formed, also indicates that it started at the, at the initial and ended at the terminal based on the direction of the arrow. Okay. Now let's talk about measure of an angle. We just saw that the angle is formed between two rays. So measure of an angle is the amount of rotation from its initial side to its terminal side. Okay. So the, the most uh, familiar unit of angle measure is the degree, right? So we, we know that we measure angles through degrees. So what is a degree? Okay, so it's the most familiar one. A degree is, or one degree, I should say. One degree is one over 360, 360 of, one three sixtieth of a circular rotation. To trace a circle, to start and go all the way around and come back to that same starting point, you make 360 degrees, right? Because a complete rotation takes 360 degrees. So for one degree, it is one out of the 360 that you will use as a definition for one measure, one degree. Okay. So I'll just say since a complete rotation contains 360 degrees. One degree is one, one over 360. And we also remember that if when I say, say 90, I don't know why I'm writing badly, uh, 90 degrees, you either write the degrees in uh, words like that, in, or you use a symbol, that little circle, the degree symbol. So write the unit as degrees, or use the symbol. If you do not write anything, and you just write it as 90, it is understood differently. We have another measure for, the degree, for um, measuring the angle, and we, it would mean that. Okay. So um, the, the whole purpose of uh, doing all these angles and the trig is to see how they behave in an XY plane, okay? In an XY axis. So if you had your XY axis and you have, say, a, a ray, right? Marked here. You can um, see that actually there is another ray that is coinciding with your 
x-axis, and that forms your initial side. Now this is called the standard position, where on the x-y plane, your angle is, um, starts, the, the angle's initial side starts on the positive x-axis, and then the vertex is located at the origin, and, and then you measure the angle along the, it extends along the positive x-axis, and there is the terminal side. You can see that the angle is measured with the vertex at the origin. This is called the standard position. Okay. So initial side, let me just write that. That is on the positive x-axis. So we call this um, positive angle if you are measuring the angle in the counterclockwise direction or the anticlockwise direction. So I'd say positive means the angle is measured in the anticlockwise direction. Naturally, negative angle would be is the angle measured in in the clockwise direction. doesn't matter if it's positive or negative, you always start your initial side on the positive x-axis. So if I'm talking about a positive angle, then it goes, it's measured in the anticlockwise direction. If I'm talking about negative angle, you can see the green angle, right? The green angle is measured in the anticlockwise direction. So this would be a negative angle. And the blue one would be a positive angle. And as you can see, they all start at the same initial side. The direction in which we sweep that angle is what makes it positive or negative. That got a little cluttered, so let's draw another grid. You know, this is called the xy plane, right? Because this is your x and this is your y. In your xy plane, you have the, the grid divided into four parts. We call them quadrants, right? And please remember, you know this, but it's important that we um, reiterate this fact, that your quadrants are always measured in the anti-clockwise direction, starting with the top right um, quadrant. Okay? So I call this quadrant one. This is quadrant two quadrant three and quadrant four. You cannot mix up the order. You can't start in the wrong um, corner. It has to all be right so that we all understand the same way. Right? So because of uh, the way it is uh, quartered, you, um, you can see that this is zero degrees. And this, you know, if you can form a box as the angle, then you have formed 90 degrees. You have perpendicular lines there. Right. So each quarter or quadrant is uh, broken up by 90 degrees, right? So this is zero degrees, 90 degrees. Add another 90 because you can make another box here. So that gives us 180 degrees. And from 180, you can go to the next, uh, um, you can cover the next quadrant with 270 degrees here. And then you can come back to for complete the 360 degrees back at zero. So you start at zero and you go all the way around. So you can technically see that we traced a circle. You know, it was a circular motion to go all the way around. So to kind of tabulate this, you know that if your angle is between zero and 90 degrees, it is in quadrant one. If your angle is between 90 and 180. So just to write it in a mathematical way, you don't, you don't write the words between, you instead use 
inequalities to express that same information. So theta, this circle with a line in, in the middle is called theta. Let me write that there, right? That um, is, the, is the most popular symbol we use to measure angles. Okay, we say angle theta. Um, so we don't use letters as much. We, um, at least in, in geometry, you might have used letters, but here we like to use uh, alpha, beta, all these Greek letters for our angles. So theta is an angle between zero degrees and 90 degrees, and that lies in quadrant one. If your angle lies between 90 and 180 degrees, you know that it's going to be in quadrant two. 180 degrees and 270 degrees is quadrant three. 270 and 360 is quadrant four. Although I said 360, you notice I put the degree symbol. So just 360 would mean that you're measuring in a different scale, like you have another measure called radian. So you always have to put the degree symbol, okay? And I have to remember to do that myself because I don't want to um, miswrite something here. So if I say, what quadrant does the angle 220 degrees uh, terminate in? Then you know that you always start from here, right? I'm kind of highlighting it. It should be a fine line, but I'm making it thick so you can see it. You, that's always your initial side. And I want to sweep 220 degree angle. So look at your quadrants and see where will your 360, um, sorry, 220 fall. Your 220 is a value between 180 and 270. So it's going to fall in the third quadrant. So if you kind of sweep this angle, this was 220 degrees. Roughly there. Okay. We will know as we do our trick, trick stuff, we will know exactly where it will be. We got that. So it's in quadrant three. If I were to graph a 45 degree angle, 45 degrees would be in the first quadrant. In particular, 45 degrees is exactly half of 90 degrees. So it's going to be a diagonal in the first quadrant. So that's how we um, get the graph. You can also see it as um, uh, mathematically as the, uh, how much of a revolution was it, right? How much did we move? So remember, degree is measured as one degree is one over 360 of a revolution, right? Or rotation, rotation or revolution. So that means if I wanted 45 degrees, it has to be 45 over 360 of a revolution. Try and simplify this. Um, you, can use, you can use a calculator, but it's going to give you a decimal answer. Okay, so 9 times 5, 48. So what this reduces is to 1 over 8. So 45 degrees is one eighth of a revolution. So the whole circle to go around is one revolution, right? One eighth of a revolution means if you split up these quadrants into eight parts, right? To eight parts, then it kind of tells you what a revolution you, uh, how to measure the one eighth of a revolution. So I'll kind of show that here. I kind of cleared the other things so we can see the revolution here. You can think of this here and this here. Let's go ahead and count to see um, if we have eight, eight parts. Right? There's a different color here. I'm running out of colors. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, eight parts, right? So uh, this is gonna be one eighth of a revolution. So this is my 45 degree angle. 90 degrees would be two eighths of a revolution or, or a quarter, quarter. Two eighths reduces to one over four, right? 120 degrees. 
180 degrees and so on. So you can, you can go on like that to understand how, um, you know, one eighth of a revolution or seven eighths of a revolution would, would where, where it would land. Like seven eighths of a revolution, go around and see where it lands and so on. Okay. Let's go talk about radian. Radian is another measure of an angle, just like the degrees. We prefer the radian because of some other benefits that we have. Uh, the way that radian is defined is, let me write out the definition. Okay. Measure of an angle, that forms an arc on a circle with the same length as the radius of the circle. So if the radius is, is uh, one, then you can make a radian one with that same length to form an arc on that circle. And that will measure the, um, that, that's, that measure is called the radian, okay? And uh, you can think of, uh, for the radian, right, to, to make one complete circle, it, it is two pi radians or roughly six and one third because you know, pi is 3.14, so two times 3.14. That kind of roughly gives you this six one third. So for radians, we don't write any unit. Sometimes you can see that they, we write RAD, rad, radians. So that's uh, not necessary, but if it's written, it's just a lot more clearer, okay? So if you think of the circle, and let's say, Then your your radian should have, should be exactly in the center. This measure will be one radian. Okay, and then it takes six and one third to go all the way around, making such marks. Okay. So it is the arc length, arc on the circle. So that's the arc on the circle. So how do we uh, convert, oh, before that, you can have radian also measured in theta, and that theta would correspond, uh, you just need to know what it's measured in. So when they just say angle theta, you should go further and see if it is measured in degrees or if it's measured in radians. So how do we convert from one measure to the other, from one scale to the other? To convert degrees to radians, multiply by pi over 180, 180 degrees of course. And uh, to convert radians to degrees, The other way around, so multiply by 180 degrees over pi. So let's try some problems. What is the radian measure? Equivalent to 150 degrees. So what is given to us is 150 degrees. You want to get rid of the degree so that you could rewrite this in radian measure. You have the conversion up here, right? 
So to, from degrees to radians, you will need to multiply by pi over 180. It's the other way around. It's 180 degrees over pi. If we forget to, um, yeah, if we forget what the order was, which one goes on top, which goes on the bottom, you can also think of it intuitively like this. You want to get rid of this degree, right? So you need another degree in the bottom. So 180 is the degree, right? Because if it's in radians, it's usually written in pi. So if it's 180 in the bottom, then 2 pi goes on the top. And you know that this is the only way you can cancel off the degrees. So that is one way for you to remember that what goes down in order to uh, cancel off. So then simplify this and clean it up. Um, 90 zeros go away. 5. So uh, all the cross cancellation leads to 5 pi over 3 radians. So 150 degrees is the same as 5 pi over 3 radians. And if you quickly recollect, 150 degrees will be in the second quadrant. So equivalently, 5 pi over 3 will be in the second quadrant. What is the degree measure of pi over 5 radians? radians. So they've given us the radians, we need to get the answer in degrees. Now, uh, a pi over 5 is given to us in radians, but you don't have a unit for radians. But if you want, you can write it as radians. So that you could use that information to see, well, I need matching radians in the bottom to get rid of this radians unit. So you can explicitly write radians in these cases to help you with that. Also, having 180 degrees on the top tells you that if the radians go away, the resulting answer will be measured in degrees. The pi also goes away. And there is this 5 times 2, 10 that cancels off with that. And see what we get. So we get pi over 5 equals 18 degrees. So we got the degree equivalent for, um, for what was given in radians. Hey class, I just noticed I made a huge error. I had to write it as pi over 180. I wrote 2 pi. If I wrote 2 pi, I should have had 360 in the bottom. So I truly apologize. I messed up here. So let's go back. Um, okay, for clarity's sake, I'm going to erase this. Okay, let's do that. That way, Oops. that's not how I erase it. Well, the answer will get changed, of course, but there's a small adjustment, so, because there was no extra two to cancel off. I truly apologize for that. So it's 150 degrees. And I spoke about how we need degrees in the bottom. So 180 degrees. So that was good. Well, the mistake I made was I should have had just the pi, not the two pi. Okay. All right. So we have zeros cancels, or cancel, canceling off. And um, three will work here, right? Five, six. So the answer would be five pi over six radians not the 5 pi over 3 as we said before, 5 pi over 6. The same stuff happens here too. So I'm going to quickly take care of that here by removing the 2. So the 5 and the 18, right? It's just between them. Not 18, 118. I'll just write that again. Okay. So the 5 and the 180, so those will cancel off. So there is no 2 pi in the bottom, there's just a pi. So it's just the 5 that cancels there. And uh, 3 is 15, 3, 36. So it must be 36 degrees. So pi over 5 radians converts to 36 degrees. Okay. So this uh, is 
36 degrees lies in the first quadrant and equivalently pi, pi over 5 also lies in the first quadrant. We talk about co-terminal angles. Co-terminal, as the name says, they both go to the same terminal, they share the same terminal, okay? What, what do I mean by they? They are two angles. Angles that share the same terminal side. Think of, you know, positive angle, let's say, and a negative angle. Let's say this was my angle 130 degrees. Right. 130 degrees. So it's positive angle. Remember how we measure positive angle? It's always in the anti clockwise or counter clockwise direction. And um, if I were to find another angle that lands on the same terminal side, then I can think of a negative angle. In this case, it's a negative 230 degrees. It goes all the way, but this time I'm measuring it in the clockwise direction because of a negative uh, sign. And that also lands on the same terminal side. So this is an example of co-terminal angles. And you can generate as many examples, right? Angles are, in this case, 130 degrees and negative 230 degrees. Now, your terminal angle, co-terminal angles can some, sometimes be more than 360. So, for instance, if it is, say, 400 degrees, 400 degrees would mean that, um, let me draw here quickly. That means you started here. This is always the terminal side, right? So you start here and you go all the way around. That's 360. And then 400 would be another 40 degrees. So then you kind of stop there, right? So you go all the way around and then further. And, and when you have more than one rotation, we have a special way of calculating that. So that's what we're going to talk about. So I'll just say for angles, measuring greater than 360 degrees, or equivalently in radians, more than two pi radians, if it is more than 360, then we ask you to subtract multiples of 360. Right? So if I, if I um, let's say I had 720 degrees, 720 degrees. Okay? If I subtract by 360, okay, I get exactly 360. So I should use a different form. I'm sorry about that. Let's say I had uh, 800 degrees. Right? 800 degrees minus 360, we did that. That gives you 440 degrees. That is still excessive because it's still beyond 360 degrees. So you have to go one more time, subtract that 440 by another 360 degrees, and that brings it to an angle that is between zero and 360, brings it down to 80 degrees. So that is how you will find the co-terminal angle for something that exceeds more than one rotation. Okay? Um, so that's, that's the, the instruction here. It says subtract multiples of 360 degrees in multiple times, right? Multiples of 360 is 360, then 360 times two, which is 720, then 360 times three, which is 1080 and so on. Okay. And this is true for radians as well. So two pi radians, I keep bringing that in, although we are talking more about the degrees. Remember that this is 
through four radians as well. Subtract multiples of 360 degrees until you reach a degree measure between zero and 360 degrees. Between zero degrees and 360 degrees. Equivalently, it will be zero, just zero, no degree. But zero degrees and zero uh, radians um, coincide there, the same uh, spot. So remember to use the right notation. So for this, uh, the example would be what I just gave. Is if you had 800 degrees. Right? So find its, its co-terminal angle can be found by doing 800 degrees minus 360. And that gives us 440 degrees. This is still excessive. So that implies you go with another 360 degrees, take off another 360 degrees. And that gives you 80 degrees and now you're good. So when they say subtract multiples of 360, what this means is instead of doing it in two steps, you could have done in two multiples of 360. Right? So that will be 800 degrees minus uh, 720, which is 80 degrees. Right? So you could save steps if you consider those, the multiples of 360. That's, that's what it means. And uh, if uh, for negative angle measures, you have to now, because it's negative, you want to make it positive. So you have to add this time multiples of 360 degrees. Or two pi radians until you reach a degree uh, between zero degrees and 360 degrees, because that is your standard circle, right? So let's uh, try um, an example this time for a negative angle. In particular, let's try um, in radians. Okay. So I have negative 11 pi over three radians, let's say. You don't have to write radians again, as I mentioned before, but you have this. And you want to write this as a positive angle between zero and, sorry, where the angle theta is between zero and two pi. So this time, remember we said we have to add 360 degrees. Because this is in radians, remember that we are now considering multiples of two pi. add multiples of two pi. So I have negative 11 pi over three. So I wanted to add two pi or multiples of two pi, right? So two times two pi or three times two pi. You can do that as like this. Okay, I'll just show you both ways, two pi. And uh, you have to do the LCD, isn't it? So you need to get the three times three times three. So instead of doing that in this step, what we're saying is right here, you rewrite your two pi as a, um, with, with a denominator three, right? So we're asking you to multiply up and down by three right here. That gives you six pi over three. And then if you took multiples of it, it's easy for you to compute. So then if you did six pi over three, 
then because they have the same denominator, all you have to do is simply uh, combine the numerators. That gives you a negative five pi over three. That is not enough. So you have to now take that negative five pi over three and add it one more time to six pi over three. And this gives you six pi minus five pi, which is pi over three, and that is good. Or you can again save a step by simply doing multiples of two pi. So two times two pi, right? This is two pi, so multiple of two pi would be 12 pi over three. And that would give you immediately 12 pi minus 11 pi, which is pi over three. You would get the answer by saving a step. All right, so that was your angles as rotations and radian measures. So um, this is uh, the first part of 5.1, and I will see you in the next video with part two.